I think we have to, as conscious adults, go, what am I really, you know, what am I caring here? What am I stressed about? What am I bothered about? I love the word bothering because when you feel bothered about it, uh, you, you know, and you're aware of it, woo, that's gonna trigger this little thing you gotta do, you know, where you, you gotta have a little acceptance in this thing here. Today we have a big, big topic to share with you. How can you get complete clarity on what's happened for you in this last 12 months? How can we get clarity on what you need to do, what you need to focus on, what your next 12 months is gonna look like? Because I bet, I mean, if you just had the 15 minutes like I just had, meaning over the last 12 months, it was a little hot mess for you, this might be the perfect show for you today. We're gonna dive deep into how I would have a conversation with you to debrief. So I celebrate you, I welcome you here, I'm excited to start with you. There's high performers all around the world, just like you, who are dedicated to their personal development, who are dedicated and committed to growing, to having a great quality of life, to living a more vibrant and connected and an excellence-driven life. So believe me, I know that's hard. Believe me, I know sometimes it felt like you were just frustrating, fighting uphill battles, but I'm here to tell you, you made it this far, Let's debrief, let's set you up for success. If you had a tough year, you're in the right place. If you had an amazing year, you're in the right place because either way, we all need coaching and we all need perspective to help us truly identify what, uh, what our distinctions are about life because we can't live next year like we live this year. We gotta get five times better and that's the challenge for us today. I'm gonna base this entire conversation off, of, it's gonna feel very conversational today. I've got over, what, I got nine points to help you debrief. And what I'm excited about is this is the same thing I did with a client uh, about four and a half days ago on the phone, super high achieving person who's been in my network maybe three or four years, who just said, hey, I'm, I'm kind of struggling to deal with some things and letting them go so I can get excited for this next year. And we went through this very framework that I'm gonna take you through. Now, to give you a, like an idea, this is a client who, just like you, they, you know, they got their act together, they know what's going on in their life, you know, they've got maturity and success, but they're also just saying, let's talk through this. Because just like anything where you get to talk through something with an expert or somebody who's been there or has perspective, sometimes just in having the conversation, you're gonna discover a lot. So if you've got family or you've got friends who are dogs and they're just not like, they're just not carrying their weight, they don't understand your commitment to personal development. They don't understand positivity and health and high performance. I'm here to remind you, you are not alone. All around the world, we've got you all trying to become better. Also, make sure you have a separate journal just for this session today. What I'd actually love you to do, open up your journal, grab a whole new page. I'm gonna take you through a nine part framework with some keywords that's gonna help you personally determine what you learned this year. It's not gonna be me telling you what's up, it's gonna be you discovering it and finding it, and we're just gonna go A, B, C, D. I'm gonna give you three keywords in each letter. Three keywords in A, three keywords in B, three keywords in C, three keywords in D, to help you bust out the A, B, C, Ds and how to set yourself up for success. Let's get to work. Welcome to your HPX coaching session. I'm Brendan Burchard. My job today is to coach you to high performance. The way I'm gonna do that is help you get clarity, what you gotta let go, what you gotta learn from, what you gotta to build towards. We're gonna to go through a nine part framework today, so it's a lot of work, and this is gonna be based on you closing the door, taking some time, do the work today. You're not here for entertainment. Many of you know I'm not funny. <laughs> so you are here for empowerment, for education. It requires journaling. It's gonna require a lot of thought about your life. So what I'd like you to do is get your mindset right now in yearly review mode. As I'm gonna give you some cue words to think about what you can celebrate or learn from or build upon and improve, okay? So again, I'm gonna go A, B, C, D. Three words in A, three words in B, three words in C, three words in D. Here we go. The first and the most important concept we're gonna keep coming back to over and over and over again for you today, around one simple word, one word. If you and I sat down and we had lunch and you ordered your fancy salad and I ordered my bad food and then we sat there and we thought through it, this is the one right here, action. Listen, a lot of people have incredible intention in life, but they lack initiative. A lot of people have a lot of hopes, but they don't do the hard work. 
A lot of people make a lot of promises, but they don't have the persistent action that changes things. So what I'd love for you to do is immediately right now, think about what did you take action towards and you can celebrate. Because I'm gonna go in territory today that's gonna be very uncomfortable and you're gonna be upset and you're gonna be like, oh my God, I sucked over here, Brennan. I didn't have a good year. I, I failed to show up here. So let's start with some celebration. What actions did you take? And they were absolutely critical to your growth, your happiness, your progress. Let me tell you one of them you did, coming here. Choosing to work on yourself, deciding to get some coaching, get somebody in your face a little bit every month to help you grow. But I'm also in the session gonna share with you some of the things I did because it's only with this coaching community that I share like some of my own lessons learned and the hard stuff that we went through and the things that we're learning too. So I'll share with you a few of mine, but what I'd love for you to do is like write down what are the five main actions you took that you're really proud of? What are five new things that you did or five things you moved towards that you're proud of? You know, take a few moments. I really, I, this is not conceptual. I actually want you to write these things down. So if you don't have a journal, please do. What are the five major actions you took? That you're like, okay, I did that. You know, maybe, maybe one was you repaired a relationship with one of your kids. I'm really proud we were branded. You know, I, I don't know if you know, the, 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 a lot of my brands were just based on Brendan and this year we built up HPX and we're building up growth and we're building up influencer. We're building out the brands around the ecosystem of what I do. I'm really proud that my wife and I, Denise, figured out how do we work together best. I'm really proud that we've hired probably across our companies over 50 new people this year across our companies. I'm really proud of those things. Doesn't mean I got everything dialed in, as we'll talk about, but it means, you know what? There's been a forward lean in our life this year. Like we took on some hard things this year. You endured and went through way more things this year than you thought you did, but I wanna know today, before we start with the magic and the fire, and I get in your head and I mess you up a little bit, what did you take action towards this year? It could be as simple as, Brent, I put up my first website. Brent, I made my first money online. Brendan, I hired that person, I mentored that person, I moved this city, I bought that thing. What five critical actions that you're proud of? Now, if you're hearing me and you have not yet written this down, you're a punk, okay? I want you to write this down. Because trust me, you're gonna come back to this journal. I, I got nine big things to go through. This is getting us warmed up. But I want you to write this down because trust me, you don't want to finish this year without reviewing what you're going to write down today. And I know it's a lot of buildup, but please, please, please give yourself that gift because I know we got a lot of new people here. I want you to write this down. Five critical things that you're proud of. Let's just start there. Five critical things you took action towards that you're proud of. Okay. So mine were some of the moving, the rebranding, figuring out things with the niece. We tried hard things. We hired people. Like I'm excited about those things. Those things, honestly, I need to sit down before we end of the year and go, all oh, right, let me integrate those actions into myself so I'm now a more confident human. Because what happens with people is they do take action. But because their measuring stick is so high, they wanna achieve this dream, they wanna make this happen, they wanna make their million dollars or whatever, the measuring stick's so high, they never integrate the wins. And if you have been with us in HPX for a while, you know I'm always telling this, you must integrate your wins. You must celebrate them and not just go out and have a bottle of wine on them, you must ruminate on them and think about them and pull them in. Like make, like take the actions and let that, pride and that strength and that recognition come into your heart and soul. That's how you get more confident every year. Because if you spent the last five years and you're not any more confident than you were five years ago, it's not because you haven't moved or learned or done anything. It's because you did not integrate those actions into your identity. I have integrated the actions. I'm a man that can move to another friggin' country, another island, another place and make it happen. I'm a man that can restart a brand new brand from scratch and build it. Holy cow, I'm a person who can hire 50 some people across our companies. I'm a person that can figure out, well, not how to do a live cast yet, but I'm still learning. You know, you gotta, you gotta take on and you gotta like assume and integrate the wins that you've had. And I promise you, your spouse, your kids, your family, your team is probably not giving you enough credit. And so if you don't give yourself credit now, good luck about feeling any better. You gotta integrate the wins, my friend. 
integrate them. So don't just write them down, feel them, be proud of them. Let's start right now, excited, motivated, connected. Okay, that's as positive we're gonna get. Now we're gonna really make you depressed. No, now we're really gonna go down into the deep and let's, let's do some analysis here. Let's do some real analysis. And we're gonna start with this simple question. The question of accountability. I love this question for several reasons. Now, first it says account dash ability. I love this one is because do you actually have the ability to account for how far you came this year? Now, let me explain what that means. In, in personal accountability means you stated some prom promises to yourself, you took the actions and you fulfilled them. You were accountable for how you showed up and how you performed each day. Accountability also means you would be able to measure that. You'd be able to take into account that. So what does accountability really mean? Accountability really means you set up some systems of measurement for your success. So how do most people do that? You probably set some New Year's resolutions. Were you accountable for those? What did you fail to take accountability for? Now, I know this is where I was like, Jesus, Brandon, can you put some balloons up, dancing bears? Can we have some positivity here? Oh, I started with positivity. Now I'm gonna go right to your face. What did you fail to take accountability for? Did you not take full accountability and for the fact that you really were the CEO of the business and you were in charge of running it and building it? Did you fail to take accountability for the fact that you promised to get your health in order? Did you fail to take accountability for your actions so you're still blaming your spouse? for your results? Did you fail to take accountability for the fact that you gotta pay some taxes? You're still late on them. Did you fail to take accountability for your credit card debt this year? Like, I just want you to think broadly. I told you at the beginning, this is a conversation. This is like a good old conversation with Uncle Coach Brendan. And so where did you fail in the accountability piece? I know that's hard, but high performers are not uncomfortable with this conversation. That we gotta be very comfortable with our measuring sticks and have this conversation. I can tell you where mine were. Accountability, I missed a ton of team calls this year. I failed to take accountability for me to make sure that every single week I got on my team calls. I own that, I'm aware of it, I'll do better next year. It's important for us to be able to look at ourselves and say, you know what, that piece. I wasn't as accountable towards my wife at the first five months of this year as I had promised her, I should have been more available to her. I should have doted on her more. I should have made sure she was set up as much as I was trying to set up the business and the studio and the things and the, you know, I should have had more wine nights with my wife this year. Like I'm accountable for that. Cause you know what, I wanna be a good husband. And it doesn't make me feel sad. I'm not getting mad at myself. I'm being realistic and I'm observing my own behavior. Gosh, I could have done more team calls. Could have been more awesome to my wife. I'm not mad at myself. There's no emotional dread about it. I'm like, dang it, could have done better. Now please notice a difference. I own that, I'm responsible for that, I'm accountable for that, versus, oh, I'm a pile of crap. There's no dread, there's no self-hate allowed. You're not 18 years old anymore. What you need is the ability to step out of your life and observe it from that observer, mindful, accountable way. It doesn't mean you hate yourself. It means you go, oh, I observe that I didn't do a good job in this area of my life. Now, what I like to do, and this is, this is a, most of you guys have this, so this is not a sale, but check this out. I got my high performance planner. This is how I do this activity. For those who might have yours handy today, I would just grab your high performance planner and I would go to the section that has your whole life assessment and I say, okay, health. Was I accountable for my health this year? Was I really the one who was in charge? Was I measuring it? Was I staying disciplined towards it? Now, let me ask those questions again. Was I in charge? Was I measuring it? Was I staying disciplined to make it happen? In charge, measuring, staying disciplined. Okay, in my health, was I, was I not? Scale of one to 10. Mental life, like did I, was I accountable for protecting my mental sanity and freedom. Did you give your mental sanity and freedom away to Instagram today? Did you give it away to that mean neighbor, to that mother-in-law, or were you accountable for your own mental health? Or are you blaming the media? Or are you blaming that spouse? Or are you blaming somebody? What about your relationships? 
Were you accountable for your behavior in your relationships? Or are you still blaming her for your anger? Are you still blaming them for your stress? What about your family? Like, were you accountable for making your family come together tighter this year? Let me ask that again. Were you accountable for making your family come together tighter? Because you know what? Each family member tends to go, oh, that's mom's job. Oh, that's dad's job. Eh, that's my strong brother's job. Nope, each person in a family is accountable for bringing the family closer together, tighter together, at least making the attempt. That's the job of being in a family. What about your friends? Were you accountable for being a great friend this year? Who did you just totally not show up and serve for as a friend this year? Who went through something, a friend, and you didn't do it? You didn't show up for them and you know that you probably could have. You missed their birthday or they went through a tough time and you didn't call them enough. What about your mission? Were you on point with your mission? Were you accountable for your mission this year? What about creating a magical experience with your family or your friends? Like you being the experience shaper of your life. What about your spirit? Did you protect your spirit? Did If you have spirituality or religion or connection with God or universe, did you connect enough? Did you talk enough? Did you feel yourself guided enough? Or were you going through the motions this year and you kind of feel blah and disconnected? What about your finances? Oh God, don't talk about the money. Did you be accountable for your checkbook this year? Were you accountable for your checkbook? Were you accountable for the money? Right? Were you, were you attentive to where you were spending money or did you go out and splurge on something stupid and, and now you're at the end of the year and thinking, I can't afford the kids Christmas? Did you fail to pay off those credit cards? Did you miss some mortgage payments? Did you not pay something to somebody you owed? Did you not manage your money well? Uh, now, I know this is the point where Jesus, Brennan, this is getting intense. I'm like, oh, dude, y'all, we ain't 10 minutes into this thing. Buckle up. We got two hours to go. This was gonna be a conversation. Some of the things I'm gonna share to you, like that doesn't resonate with me at all, Brennan, but I promise in this nine part framework, I'm gonna get you somewhere and you go, ooh, ah, ah, right there. I'm trying to pinpoint with you, just going through lots of examples. What about your learning? I know you all won there, because you're right here today. So I wanna celebrate you. You were accountable for your personal development this year. Otherwise, you and I wouldn't have this conversation right now, and I love you for it. Now notice the things we can do is we're gonna go through here today. Some of you are gonna experience this thing completely different than other people. Because I'm gonna take you through nine words and notice when I say action or accountability, I'm kind of hitting two angles here. Asking for some positives, asking for some negatives, but you can do that on each, right? There's some actions you did not take, you little brat. <laughs> Right? There's some action, some things you were incredibly accountable for. I bet there were friends you showed up for. I bet there were days you made great health decisions. I bet some of you sold your business, made a bunch of money, paid off the debt. Like my assumption is there's positive and negative in each of these, right? It's your job today to be in your brain, to have your journal, and just let me cue things. I'm not here to give you all the solutions in the world. My job as promised is to help you get some clarity. And I'm just gonna hit you from a hundred angles until you find that razor sharp, that's what I was here for. You can't do that if you're doing 50 multitasking activities right now. Be here with me. I promise you, we're only two cards in out of nine. Have you learned anything about yourself today? I hope you have. And it's not from something I just said, it's something you're open to. I'm gonna say something today and you're gonna think it's so precise exactly for you and you're like, that's why I'm in this, that's why I'm in this program, man. That's exactly why I was here. But I guarantee, if to me, if these are the two dominant frames you can look through the year on, the actions you took that supported you or the actions you didn't take you should have, and things you were accountable for and you weren't accountable for, those two things alone will really serve you. Here's what I did last night in preparation for this. All these cards, I wrote out my notes yesterday for all this, and what I did is I literally opened up my calendar and I went through each month looking at my calendar under each of these cards. So I was like, okay, what actions did I take this year I can be proud of? What didn't show up on my calendar? Oh, okay. What was I accounted for? What was I not? And it just helped me baseline some of these things. I hope that serves you. Okay, last big A. I told you there's three part framework for each thing. Last one is acceptance. This is the one I think everybody misses every year. What happens for most people is they have an accept 
They have not accepted incidences in their life. And their lack of acceptance of incidences in their life carries over year over year over year over year. And sometimes you and I call that emotional baggage, right? I know people who still have emotional baggage from a deal that happened or didn't happen five years ago. I know people who have emotional damage and baggage from something that happened 15 years ago, three years ago, two months ago, whatever. Now, I'm not here to judge them. I'm just here to say, at some point, we gotta deal with that. There's a lot of things that happened I did not like, but I fully have to grasp that they did, in fact, happen. And so, it is what it is. I have to accept that it happened, and now I have to choose how I'm going to frame that thing that happened, mentally and emotionally, and I'm gonna to have to choose who I'm gonna be because of that going forward. Am I gonna be the victim or the victor? Am I gonna be the person who carries on, grows from it, goes from it, or the person who's grounded in you know, sorrow from it? I gotta choose those things, and I don't pretend that's easy, but I'd better dang be aware of those. Does that make sense? I gotta be aware of those. I'll give you some examples of mine, I promise you guys to kind of share as we go through here. Like things I gotta accept this year. I lost two good friends this year. Both of them under the age of 50. And that sucks. It's part of life. Don't, didn't want it. Incredibly sad situations uh, for all their friends and all their family and, and both of them had kids. Um, and having lost parents and friends and dozens of peers throughout the years, I know it sounds super weird, but I'm okay with death. I'm super okay with death. I didn't want it to happen to them, but it did. It's a final outcome. I can't go back and change it. I can't go into next month wishing I would have called them more I can't go into next month wishing I'd gone on a guy's trip with one of the guys. I can't go into next month feeling sorry for myself or them. What I have to do is go, okay, it happened. I accept that for me, I have a person of faith, so I, for me, I go, okay, I accept God's timing being profoundly unknowable to me. I accept God's timing. I don't like it. I didn't want it but I accept that it happened. Because if you're still fighting things that had a final outcome and they're done, you're losing. Let me say it again. If you're still fighting things that happened and had a final outcome, you're done. You, you, you lose. I know people who are still angry about a business partner that stole from them 10 years ago and nothing has happened since. They haven't talked to that person. It's been dealt with. They've built wealth. They're good. They're still angry. They're still hooked. If you're still hooked by incidences of the past, I am not here to judge. I am here to say, raise your hand, ask for help. Go see a therapist. Talk to a coach. Meditate. Do what you have to do to release, to find acceptance. Acceptance doesn't mean approval. You don't have to approve your business partner's behavior five years ago. But if it's still troubling you today, you gotta deal with that mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And I'm here to tell you, this is the perfect month to release the emotional baggage that you've been carrying. So did something happen this year you didn't like? For me, I lost two friends. For me, I've lost seven, uh, seven commercial real estate deals this year, maybe something like that. Uh, don't like it. It's a literally a matter of fact moment in my life right now. I'm like, dang, I'm having trouble buying properties where I need to build my teams. And that's just, okay, I don't like that. But if I go into every deal angry about all those that fell through and I don't meet the new deal from a new perspective, I'm losing. Does that make sense? You can't carry old broken deals into new deals. Let me say it again. You can't carry old broken deals into new deals. You can't carry old crappy days into a new day. You can't carry yesterday's scorecards against the world into today. It doesn't mean you didn't learn. It didn't mean you adjust. 
but you have to have emotional freedom. You know what you want? You know why you're here today? Is because Uncle Brennan is gonna tell you, you should have some emotional freedom. And if you can't give it to yourself now, please don't lie to yourself and tell you you're gonna give it to yourself January 1. Like tonight, maybe before you go to bed, you write some questions down and say, what must I accept from this year? What do I just gotta accept? Chalk it off is a win, chalk it off is a loss. By the way, you chalk it off, erase it, blank new board. I, there, I can't think of anything that happened this year I, that I'm emotionally connected to right now. Like you have to learn to accept what is and go with it. It's super hard, I get it. But I would say the number one thing that's hurting most of this community, knowing what I've heard from the feedback and from everything we study, is how many people are holding on to old stories, old situations that they wish they could turn, wish they could change, or wish they could bite or fight. And I'm like, you need to find mindfulness. You need to find an awareness. You need to find a connection to the now. You need to get present. Because without that freedom, you enter this next decade, you don't want to drag in the last decade and the next decade. You want to start the new decade as a new you fresh, right? Why are people so happy when life change happens sometimes, right? The kids leave the nest. You know, the, 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 the relationship changes or, you know, you know, cuts off or something new. Everyone loves a new day. And so few people realize that you can have a new day, metaphorically, every day if you practice a process of acceptance. One thing I would love for you to do, you know, I know we've got, what, 45 days left of this year. Every night for the rest of the year, focus on this one. What can I let go of that happened today? The more you can learn release, the more you'll find freedom and power in the moment. It's really important, right? If you were in my, in my seminars or my events, 50 things go bad or wrong that I hear about backstage, and then I gotta get up on stage and be fresh for 2,000 people in the moment. That's so hard. I had to learn to do that. And the only, like, this is my superpower. I was like, what's your superpower on stage? I'm not funny, it's this. It's that backstage, I can do this in four seconds before I go on stage. That's my superpower. Accepting what is, going out and deal with it every day. Accept what it is, go out and deal with it. Accept what it is, go out and deal with it. So I know this is a little bit of a longer talk, but I told you this is gonna be like a conversation with Coach Brendan today. Why am I referring to myself as a third party today? <laughs> I want you to practice acceptance. I really do. I think this is the hardest one. Okay, with that one, with that one, that's the power of being here today. This is why I like teaching, by the way. I know we got a lot of influencers here and a lot of teachers here, educators, experts, thought leaders. That's why I love using frameworks. When you use a framework, everyone can access it in such a different way. Isn't that cool? Such a different way. Okay, those are the A's. I'm gonna say the most I saw, speed reading, accountability. Woo! -hoo! Good to know, y'all. Okay, let's go into B's. Oh, if you thought any of that was painful, the B's feel like a B minus. Let me tell you what. The B's are, I would say two of them aren't super good feeling, but boy, they're so good to identify every year. I really have focused on these this year for myself. Um, and please know, uh, my, my assumption for you guys is always, you are high performers. You're on that high performance experience. You're on that journey. So you're willing to look at things that are uncomfortable. I really believe one reason some people are underperformers and other people are high performers is a high performer is willing to call a spade a spade, deal with difficult truths, observe things that they don't like, and also deal with them, process them, talk about them. So forgive me, because this first one doesn't sound very motivationally Brendan, but it is. This is the ultimate one. When you look back, and I would go, if I were you, I would go, and I would look at your calendar. I'd say January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. This is a quintessential question I want you to take on. What bothered you this year? I mean, what really got under your skin? Forgive my language, what pissed you off? What really frustrated you? And being aware of what that was. And I know some of you are like, oh dear, Brennan, this is a long list, yo. This is gonna be a long list. Right, 
write the list. I want you to write in your journal right now, what bothered you this year? And, 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 and please don't call anyone's name out in the chat roll down below. <laughs> but what really bothered you? I'm sure there was something that just, you know, got under your skin. You're like, oh, those bastards, they cheated me. Or, you know, those people didn't give me my due. Or this woman took that from me. Or, or, or you know, my commute sucked all year. You know, or, or, you know, there's something that bothered you. I think most people are unconsciously perpetually bothered. I think most people are unconsciously perpetually bothered because they're not aware of it. They carry this negative intensity about them. They're frustrated. There's an edge to them that's not a positive edge, not a leading edge, but rather like a, a fighting edge. Does it make sense? And so I think we have to, as conscious adults, go, what am I really, you know, what am I caring here? What am I stressed about? What am I bothered about? I love the word bothering because when you feel bothered about it, uh, you, you know, and you're aware of it, whoo, that's gonna trigger this little thing you gotta do, you know, where you, you gotta have a little acceptance in this thing here. This is really important because what happens for a lot of people is they were bothered by a lot of things and it carried on them. Like, did you have a lot of neck pain? Do you have a lot of shoulder pain? Do you have a lot of back pain? Sometimes that's the physical manifestation of you going like this. I know people who literally grit their, who grit their teeth down to nubs because they didn't realize they were bothered by something all day and now at night their mind is going to work and they're angry about it. And I think you gotta be really aware of what has bothered you this year. Again, I'll share you with you lots of my things. What's bothered me? I've been very bothered by the inability to scale at the speed I wanted this year. It's constantly on my mind. I haven't hired enough people. I don't have the building yet. Uh, that building didn't go through. Uh, you know, we're not where I thought we would be. Uh, and it's been like a constant thing and I caught it I don't think I caught it until probably like literally, I think it was like the week before. And I was journaling down, and I was like writing all the things I'm excited for. But I could literally tell when I was writing stuff down on the beach that I wasn't feeling like I usually do. And this is the tell, so please listen. If you've been detached from the feelings and the emotions and the excitement of the ambition of the dream, it's because something's been bothering you in the background that you might not have been aware of just yet. And so unconsciously, there's this thing yanking and pulling at you. And when that's happening, that yanking and pulling, it's narrowing your view to deal with it. And now you're blinder or detached from the bigger dream. So for me, I was, right about, I was writing, I noticed when I was writing on the beach, I was like, why, why am I not excited as I should be about these next six months? I mean, think about that for yourself. Why aren't you more excited about the next six months? Some of you are like, Brendan, I had my coffee, I'm fired up, I'm good to go, homie. But some of you are like, yeah, well, why aren't you even more excited about your opportunities for the next six months? And I realized it's because I was bothered by the fact I wasn't able to deliver scale earlier. And it was just always, I was going to bed thinking I ain't got the people, because I, I was trying to end up this year with 30 employees down here. Did not even close to happen. And it's been, it's like, it just bothered me. It's been, it was hanging on me. And I didn't pick up onto it uh, until maybe about two months ago. And I was like, ooh, this has been really kind of pissing me off. Let me, let me explore, why does that need to bother me? Why does that need to bother me? And now I come up with all these reasons. Well, that should bother me because I'm not achieving as fast as I thought. I'm not reaching as many people. Right? I tell myself all these stories and I, and I ask, well, what would happen if it didn't bother me at all? And I just reset a new expectation. And I said, oh, well, if it didn't bother me at all, and I reset a new expectation, I would say to myself, you know what? I'm gonna have so much fun hiring the next 10 people. Not, I'm down 30, huh, let me reframe this. I'm gonna have so much fun hiring the next 10. And literally my brain went, Phew! it switched because I identified that this was really bothering me. And what if it didn't bother you and you could reset a new expectation? What if it didn't have to bother you? 
What if that thing had to happen? Or that thing can now be reset in your timing or your expectation? Um, I know friends who were bothered by like simple things. Like they have pet peeves and everything upset them. They're always pissed about something. You didn't know any of those people? They're always angry about something. Oh, just always angry about something. You're like, why are you bothered by these little things? You guys heard me joke about this over and over and over again, how many people are so bothered by their commute. I'm like, so you're angry about your commute. How long you been doing it? 10 years. So you've been doing something for 10 years and you still carry emotional, like negative sensations about it? They're like, yeah, I'm like, you gotta learn to anticipate the things are gonna bother you and not let them bother you anymore. That's called maturity. You gotta anticipate the things that might bother you and not let them bother you anymore. Or, I know some action oriented, some high performers are like, no dude, dude, these things bother me, I'm gonna crush them, I'm gonna change them, then great, crush them and change them. Your goal, stop letting things bother you so much, reset. That's why we're doing this session today. What's been bothering you this year? What could you do about it? What could you shift? What could you change? I got bothered by, uh, you know, uh, legal, financial, like just administrative stuff was so pissing me off in the first four months of this year. I was like, I'm never gonna survive this paperwork hell. Ah! And every day I was not looking forward to the day because I was administrative hell. But hold on, hold on a second. In that same day, I got to create. I got to communicate with you guys. I got to take a walk on the beach with my wife. But what was I focused on? Well, the thing that bothered me. Because remember, the thing that bothers you, it narrows your view, which can blind you from the beautiful abundance you have around you. So please take note. What bothered you? How do you flip it? I think it's really important. You guys like this one? Tell me, I think this is a really important one to be aware of. And here's the other thing. You want bonus points, points today, high performer? Ask your spouse or your partner or your team this by the end of the year. What bothered you this year? Should we talk about that? Could we have a conversation about that? I wanna do better for you. Trust me, this one's gonna be a long conversation with my wife. Okay, TMI, next big question. What burned you out? I want you to identify every moment of burnout you had significant. Some of you are like, dude, that's a long list. Okay, that means the longer that list is, the longer you fail to protect your boundaries. The longer this list, what burned you out this year, when did it happen, the longer that list is, I promise you, that's just failure of boundaries. And I know people don't like when I say that, but that's ultimately the primary reason. Not there's other reasons. Well, it burned you out. Okay, what burned me out this year? Um, I had, uh, we did like seven or eight events, and un, my, by my own accountability, uh, I always, I had a rhythm for years where we finish an event, and after I finish a seminar with you all, I take that Sunday night, that Monday, and that Tuesday, and I'm off. I don't speak, I don't use my words because I'm protecting my voice, I'm letting my voice heal from all that pushing. I don't do email, I might maintain social media, but basically I go into recovery mode, right? I deliver as hard as I can for four days, and then I go into recovery mode, Sunday night, Monday, and Tuesday. That has been my practice, I think I said three, four years, but no, it's been uh, since 2000, uh, 11, it's my brain injury. That has been the rhythm. I disappear Sunday night, I'm off the grid mostly Monday and Tuesday. It's not until usually Wednesday at noon or 5 p.m. that I start speaking again. My wife always gets my first words. She always gets, I love you, honey. That's always the first words. And you know what? I got burned out two or three times this year because I failed at that. I wasn't accountable for that. I let other people approach into my boundaries. Meaning, oh, on Monday, shoot, I gotta take this call. I guess I'll take the call. Oh, I got this project due. I guess I'll work Sunday night and not recover from my event. Because I felt fine. The adrenaline was pumping. I got it, guys. I didn't protect my own recovery. And that caused a lot of burnout this year. I would say I probably had three or four significant like days or multi-days where I was just like fried. 
Whose fault was that? Only my own. Could I blame something? Sure. Could I blame my audience? Yep. Could I blame my team? Sure. Could I blame my spouse? Yes, if I'm a jerk. Or I go, Brendan, you didn't fight hard at the boundaries, man. You got burned out. You didn't fight the boundaries. That's what happened. You said yes when you should have said no. You burned yourself out. Don't let that happen anymore. Get clear about that. I need you super clear. How do your boundaries get pushed? Is it a spouse, a team, partner, opportunity? Where are your breaking points that are allowing you to burn out? Is it too many nights you said, you know what, I'll push through till 2 a.m. And now it became seven nights till 2 a.m. with lots of coffee at midnight, messed up your sleep. Where, where was it that you got burned out? And please don't put that on anyone else's shoulder but your own because that's the big stuff coming back to your guys' favorite word of this one. Now these guys gotta make out. I guess I gotta do that weird thing now. Like this is important. What burned you out? Where was it? I, I don't want you to conceptually go, I agree with what you're saying. I, when, what month, what week, what event? Where did you get burned out specifically? And for those who are like, it was all year, baby. You cannot start your decade like that. You better figure this one out. If you've been on a burnout trail, I got clients who, you know, they worked, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120 hours a week for six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12 years. And they're like, I don't know why I feel so bad. I'm like, yo, I know why you feel bad because you're taking no accountability. You're giving your power over to others, which is allowing you to burn yourself out. You're making yourself a martyr. Look, I work harder than anyone else. Aren't I awesome? No, you have an ego problem. You think you're the only one. You're the only one capable. You're not delegating. You're not protecting the boundary. You're not fighting for your recovery. Please friends, every day you need recovery. Every day. I mean, you guys know every 15 minutes I'm up, I'm moving, I'm breathing, I'm shaking it out. I'm, I'm taking my meditation, I'm breathing, I'm working out, I'm, I'm making choices that are good for my sanity. I, I can you know, drive to the gym or I can walk to the gym and listen to something positive or have a conversation with somebody I like. It takes longer going to the gym, but it's good for me. Everyone says, but Brandon, you could get to the gym faster. I'm like, but I like the long walk. It makes me feel good. It's for me. No one else protects my burnout by adding on a little time here, a little time there. I think this is a huge, huge one for you all. I hope that helps. Now this is more positive for those of you like I'm begging on you. And that is what built you up? What made you stronger? What lifted you up? What made you a better person this year? Like what, what, what really built you up this year? Um, what made you better? What made you stronger? The team built me up. The, the time, having to learn how to scale a business again, the, the, the opportunity to coach a couple, you know, this year, I'm now actively coaching two billionaires for the first time, I never had that before. I'm having the opportunity right now to work with three Olympians who, I, I don't work with them on their physicality, on their mentality, on their men, on, on mentality? Sure, mindset. Um, I've had the opportunity to do new events, rebranding everything into Influencer that used to be Experts Academy or HBX that used to be just Brandon.com. That, that's like, all that's like maybe better. Like it feels like a super ugly hot mess and God bless the hot mess sometimes because the hot is what lifts the balloon higher. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you gotta be aware of those. What built you up? Like something made you stronger this year and maybe you wanted it, maybe you didn't, but something built you up. I'm telling you what, sometimes the fire lifts you up. Find out what built you up this year. No way you can pretend to be clear if you haven't identified the moments, the people, the situations that made you stronger. If you are unaware of those, I'm here to tell you, identify it. Because don't you want to replicate those? Like new situations, if it was for you, great. It's so critical. So here are the Bs for you all. What? bothered you, number one. Number two, what burnt you out? And number three, what built you up? Those are the Bs. If you can be aware of those things, I think we're doing a good job. Um, my question to you, which one did you like best in these? Which cued the most thoughts? Bothered, burned out, 
or built up? Bothered, burned, or built? Bothered, burned, or built? Let's move on to the C's. You've got the A's, the B's, the C's. We're coming up to the C's. This is my absolute favorite thing at the end of the year. And that is what to cut out. What to cut out. It's the first C. What to cut out. What do we got to cut out of the year and out of next year? So here's what I mean by that. Again, my cue points for me is my calendar because I'm really judicious on my personal calendars, both from my journals. So I go back through my journals, my high performance planner. And then I also go back through my live calendar, uh, our, 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 my team calendars in our four different companies. I have four different team calendars. And then I've got the Brendan calendar, which is my personal calendar. And I go through all four calendars. And then I go through all six of these babies. And I always look back and I go, what did I do that I should have cut out? This is the question that I should have cut out. Like shouldn't even tried, shouldn't have taken on, good lesson there, spent too much time, dead end project, dead end time, wrong focus. I've done that every year since 2006 that I've done this one. And you know what it helps me? It helps me prioritize and schedule everything. Like imagine if you had 10 years of things that you were aware of consciously that you really thought about of what you should exclude in your life. Wouldn't that make you more focused going forward? I was like, Brandon, how do you stay so focused? I'm like, well, depending on which team member you talk to, I wouldn't say, <laughs> I don't think all my team thinks I'm focused. But pretty universally, if you look at the, like the, the, you know, the momentum of my life and what I've created, I'm pretty razor clear. You know, everything's either supporting our subscriptions our live events, our coaching, our team's missions. And I'm all, it's always moving the needle forward. And they're like, how have you not done certain things? Because I tried them and they were stupid. I tried major partnerships over here and they were a waste of six months of my time. Good lesson learned. I carry that lesson forward in knowledge. So what would you cut out? I'll give you some examples. This year, one thing I should have cut out was my attempts to A, learn Spanish. What a wasted three or four weeks that ended up being. Not because learning Spanish is wasted, it was the wrong time. I was not going to be able to be consistent enough with it to gain skill proficiency. And I should have just removed that block, put that block in another time when I could be dedicated and disciplined. And I knew that. Because is there anything you started? You knew, you knew you weren't gonna be able to do it with excellence, but you're like, I'll give it the college try. That was something I should have cut out. Writing a, a book I'm working on right now. I was dabbling with this book uh, over the last four, four and a half months. Bad move. Should have cut that out. Said, you know what? Not right now. Just, just grab that whole block of time. Bup, bup, bup. Should have cut that out. Absolutely should have cut it out. Um, should have cut out, uh, let's see. Should, should have cut out some, uh, you know, some activities in the business that I took on that I didn't particularly enjoy. Those should have been just delegated. But I was like, oh, I want to wrap my head around this. I want to learn this. And probably didn't need to. Could have delegated that piece. Should have cut those things out. Um, there was one person in my life I should have just cut out of the picture. I had a negative person in my life and I let that person's like toxicity carry on for a good two months, maybe. Not, not the whole year, but about two months I was dealing with, you know, one of those vampire energy people, empire banner, em Empire, vampire energy, empire, energy vampire. Energy vampire. <laughs> I was dealing with an energy vampire for a good 60 days. And this was somebody I was trying to like help and support, but it was like, it was just like beating my head against the wall. And I should have been like, yo, don't have time for a call today. Uh, you know, good luck with you. Chow. That, that should have happened. I didn't do that. Were there any people you should have cut out this year? or cut the hours you spent with them? Is there any foods you should have cut out this year? Croissants, damn. We got this little cafe over here and they don't have a lot of a selection, but they have a, a croissant ham and cheese thing. I had more ham and cheese sandwiches this year than I had all of my life combined, right? Let's see, processed ham, not healthy. If you didn't know, 
Processed ham is like a carcinogen, in fact. It's terrible for you, terrible. Just great way to die. And I stuffed that in my face probably like 20 times this year. I have no idea how many of those I ate. Should have cut that out. You know what? It was in this little bakery thing, right next to the bakery thing, salads. Croissant, ham and cheese, salad. Croissant, salad. Easy choice, should have cut out the left one. So you see what I'm saying? You gotta learn how to cut stuff out. So what should you cut out this year? I'm being serious with you. I hope you have a big long list. You all know, you all know what you need to cut out. So make sure that you've journaled that in. And here's why I'm having you make sure you're journaling this because by the end of the year, you're gonna be so ambitious to set your New Year's resolutions. Sometimes the most important thing going into New Year is what you're not gonna do. Not just what are the dreams and things. Like this year, I don't break boundaries. I don't eat through a croissant ham and cheese. I don't let va energy vampires, you know, haunt me for six, you know, six, eight weeks. You gotta be aware of these things. That's how you mature and get better. That's how like every year I feel like, man, I'm getting so much better because I'm doing these things. And what's this is gonna take? This is gonna come right back to one thing we talked about that you guys liked, accountability. We gotta learn to cut it out. We gotta go, okay, I'm accountable for it. No, no one else is gonna discourage me from eating ham and cheese croissants. That's gotta be me. That's gotta be me. I gotta know, I'm just telling you, there's ways to do this, you gotta be aware of it. Okay, let me move on. I like this one. Who do you know at this point, like literally now, do you need to connect with? So the first one's cut out. What activities, projects, issues, things you need to cut out, or could you have cut out? And why, what did you learn from them? And then this one, who do you need to connect with? Who, and what I mean by that is, did you fail to have some connection moments? And I know I, people are like, why don't you start with the positive? I'm like, no, no, I, I really want you to think about it. like, cause this is usually top of mind for people. Like, did you fail to connect with your daughter enough? Did you fail to connect with your spouse enough? Did you fail to connect with your audience enough? Like one of my connections is, I sucked on my newsletter my email newsletter for the very first time in, in uh, 13 years. I had, a, I had the, the highest level of infrequent sends to my broader newsletter this year than I ever had. I failed to connect with my audience via email. I really did. I just got busy and started doing things. That was a big connection point failure. Of, right? I learned that. I didn't connect with my nephews as much as I should have this year. Right? Started off pretty good, ended pretty weak. Good to know, okay. And again, these aren't things to make you hate yourself. It's just things to be accountable for, to be aware of. Because I bet you also had some great connection points this year. You know, I made a lot of new friends this year. I mean, I made more new friends that I'll be friends with over the next coming years this year than I've probably made in the last three years combined. And I make a lot of friends. I made great friends this year. Uh, just like real like people I wanna hang out with and see all the time. And that, that was a huge benefit. Like, I've traveled this year to see my friends more than I've ever traveled before. And they traveled to see me more. This was a great year for friendship for me and I'm super pumped about that. But I screwed up on the nephews. Okay, great, let's recalibrate now. That's all, no hatred, no upset, just being aware. I think that is absolutely critical. So who did you need to connect with? Okay, with that, I'm gonna go to, let's see, what to cut out, who to connect with, who did you not connect with? And let me just, if I can, something I encouraged my mastermind last month is know who you do need to connect with um, or you failed to and repair that in this next 45 days, right? If you got a team member you gotta connect with, make it happen. You got a spouse, a friend, a partner, some, somebody you failed, you still got time. And listen, almost every relationship can be repaired with one or two phone calls, that's it. Hop on FaceTime with the nephews for 20 minutes. I'm good for six weeks with them. They're cool. That's all it takes, 20 minutes. Find the 20 minutes, dude. Get on FaceTime with the little buddies and they're happy. So if you didn't win yet connecting with somebody, you can repair that in a 20 minute phone call. Let's get back in the game, y'all. Don't run into November, December trying to finish all your projects while you forget your people. Last big piece. What? Did you create, what, what did you create this year that you're really proud of? And what did you fail to create? 
What did you create and what did you fail to create? I love this question. I do this every year and I was like, ugh. Okay, this year, what did I create I'm proud of? I created a bigger teams, super proud of that. Uh, created a new life experience for me and my wife, super proud of that. What did I create? Uh, created about, you know, 100 new worksheets and a couple hundred new videos. Uh, we created some new funnels. We created some new offers. We created new branding. I mean, we were creating a lot in the business. That was super fun. That was really, really fun. Um, you know, we created some new team rhythms and organization that's going better. We've, uh, you know, we, we've created new jobs for people. We've created a lot of new fun things. So I'm super pumped about that. What did I fail to create? Well, I know that I, I failed to create our, our new supplement line at the speed I should have, right? We're in the final year of creating this full line of supplements, um, not MLM, just straight up retail supplements. And I, I, I failed to move that project forward and complete it. Again, not mad at myself, just aware. I didn't create that line. And I researched that line for four years. And this was the year I was gonna put the bow on top of it, finish it, have it all up there, have it ready for sale, didn't get it done. I haven't yet created uh, a, a, a sort of seamless uh, um, e-commerce store experience that we got team working on it. I just didn't, didn't get there. I should have had that locked and loaded another, you know, four months ago. But just team changes, movements and things, I didn't get that, that frustrates me. Um, what I didn't create, uh, I didn't create enough white space of time for Denise and I to just hang without worrying about building, hiring, scaling. Um, I'm not saying we didn't do any, I'm just saying we could have created more. So again, it's not being mad, it's just being aware. I'm like, I could have created a few more magical moments with my wife so far. So can you create those things? You've been waiting on them, can you create them? I think that's really important. What did you create? What didn't you create? Create those things that you're waiting on and get them done. Let me do a fast recap. Today, the A, B's, C's, and D's in the order I went look like this. Number one, this is your framework. Type this out for me, guys. Action, number two, accountability, number three, acceptance. Then we took on what bothered you. We took on what burnt you out. We took on what built you up. Then the C's, we took on what you need to cut out, who you need to connect with, and what you created or need to create. Bam, now the fun stuff. This is my favorite part. Here we go. We are 45, did I already say it's my favorite part? Okay, they're all, all nine of those are my favorite part. Um, wait, three, six, nine, yeah, okay. Uh, I said nine part framework. I think this turns out to be 12. Bonus. Bonus round! Okay. The D's, here we go. My very, very favorite one. This year, what did you decide or fail to decide that would have been important? What were your major decisions? What were your major decisions? How'd those turn out? That's an important part of analysis. What were my major decisions this year? How did those turn out? Decisions for myself, for my family, for my business? How did those turn out? Like we decided to rebrand, how'd it turn out? Here's the pros list, here's the cons list. Yeah, pros and cons. I want you to break down your major decisions and put your pros and cons. What was good about that decision? What was bad about that decision? Be super familiar with that. What are the major decisions you made this year? Maybe it was like move, do this, start that, hire this person. What was the pros and the cons? Because that's how you get smarter every year. But also, what's something you must decide today? Some of you have been thinking, oh, one day I'll move there. Decide today. Well, one day I'm gonna start this business. Uh, decide today. I'm gonna lose this jerk in my life. Uh, decide today. Uh, I'm gonna go buy that thing. Do it, pull the trigger, let's go. Like, no more indecisiveness gets to enter the next decade of your life. All that indecisiveness you had over the last five years punked you, hurt your life, held you back. Be bold, be decisive. What must you decide right now? Like it's scary. I mean, we're about to 
you know, we've gone through this rebrand, we rebrand again, and blah, 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 blah. even this morning, about the 50th cycle through this conversation, I'm like, okay, we're, we're gonna pull, the, just bam, we're gonna do it. You just make that decision. It doesn't mean you have it all figured out. It doesn't mean it's not gonna be a pain in the butt. It means you made the decision. God bless you, good for you. Go forward with faith, make it happen. You gotta pull the trigger, as they say. Get it done. Make the bold decision and don't walk back. Set sail. Whatever metaphor you wanna have, what are the major decisions that you know you need to make that today you make them? Because you know what? If we spent this time together and all we had is today you made a major decision, and you got clear on it, and with your spouse, your partner, your team, you said, this is what's up, this is where we're going, made the call, and you spoke from that, from a place of confidence, I promise you, it's relieving. Because you know what, coming back to one of these things, do you know what is bothering a lot of you? Indecision. You, you go year over year thinking about the thing, but you don't, Make the decision and execute. And every piece of indecisiveness adds up in the back of your mind like a merry-go-round of doubt. And that merry-go-round is swinging and swinging and swinging and spinning and spinning and spinning. And it's punking you, it's messing you up. So you gotta go, okay, let me decide. What's the critical decision we need to make? And maybe you can't make it on your own. Maybe you gotta call up your spouse, your partner, your friend, your team tonight and go, this is what's up. Don't know. But by the time we hang up, we know. And you make the call. Now, today, you're gonna really carry that decision into a new decade? You know how debilitatingly sad that would be for me? Well, I guess I'm gonna carry the same decision that I've been waiting to make into another decade? This is not anything to brag about. You know what I did in my life? I carried indecision from decade to decade. No one puts that on the tombstone. No one wants that in the obituary, that you were a faithful carrier of indecision. This is the sound, it sounds like a disease. I'm a carrier of indecision. No, we want you to be decisive, be bold. I always tell people, I was really inspired by Jeff Bezos and his reporting uh, one year to a senior leadership team. He said to them that in general, Amazon over the last couple of decades has made the decision to do what they were gonna do when they only had anywhere between 40 and 60% of the information, right? We all wait until, oh, when I have 100% of the data, 100% of the information, then I'll go. But the guy who became the richest person in the world and built the biggest brand in history, he goes, no, no, we often only have 40 or 60% of the decision and we go. So stop waiting for perfection, stop waiting for all the intel, stop waiting for all the data and all the inputs, make the decision, try, go, you can pivot later, get on with it. I think that is the most important thing I can tell you over and over and over again. Almost all of, all of the things bothering you come back to failure to decide. So make the decision. If, if, if you're gonna fix that relationship, fix it or don't fix it, move on. If you're gonna fix the, the business, fix the team, fix the thing, get it done. Like just the other day we were here and I had to make a decision I was, that I just was like, I didn't wanna make. Like we were, we were working on this other commercial property down here for building our new team. And it was like, I kinda want it, but there's this risk. And we're like in this, like I'm going back and forth with all these people about it. And you know, we're talking to the lawyers here and the realtors here and the owners here. And it's like, it was like I, I had that, maybe 14 emails in my inbox and like three texts on it. And I was like, copy all, hey all, deals off, not moving forward with this property, too much hassle, thank you so much for your time, let's move on to the next one, Brendan. There's like 14 people on that damn email. It felt so good, I went and got a pina colada, went and the, no GMT. <laughs> but the decision, just writing the decision out and telling people that's where we're going, ah! Uh, I mean, I was up how many nights worrying about that space? You know, can we get this? Can we do that? No, nope. cut it loose, man. Not the right thing, cut it loose, next. Right, I remember Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen teaching me that. The four most powerful letters in the English language, N-E-X-T, next. I remember hearing that when I was 20 some years old. That's powerful, next. Cut it loose, move on, make that decision. I hope that will support you and get you fired up. Next big thing is, okay, you're gonna make a lot of decisions. 
You're gonna make a lot of decisions. I would love for you to write down all the major decisions that you are going to make and you are gonna support and you're gonna get done and you're gonna make that decision this week, this upcoming week, like, right? It's, at this point, you know. Call a spade a spade, call up the therapist. Am I stupid to make this decision right now? If they tell you yes, maybe think about it. If they tell you, well, I've been thinking you make that decision about five years ago, make the decision, right? Been waiting to decide, am I gonna be paleo or keto? Who, choose one, lose the weight. Oh my God, if you read one more blog post about how to lose the weight, I'm gonna punch you. Just do it. Okay. Next D is to design. I love this one. Uh, design the path forward. But before we get there, where did you fail to design your year? Where did the year design you versus you design it? What do I mean by that? If you had a goal, did you make your battle board? Did you do your project plan? Did you design your life to support that end? You wanted to lose weight? Did you design your life to make that happen? Did you design it? Did you design the friendships? Did you design what's in the fridge? Did you design how you eat? Did you design how you think? Did you design your day? Like, I'm so, I can't tell, I know a lot of you guys have this. It's on a shelf, it looks pretty. You Instagrammed it and you have not even used it 10 days in a row. That's a failure to design. Like what people are doing is they are reacting, not designing, and that's why they're miserable. What people are doing is they are reacting, not designing, that's why they're miserable. They're not designing the decade. They're not designing the year. They're not designing the month. They're bumbling in. And they're always bumbling in. And everything's a new bumble. And it's just bumbling, 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 which means you can never show up with full excellence if you're not working a plan. So if you don't know your plan, make a plan. If you need a plan that requires other people, a, a team, a boss, a, a, an outsourced partner, a, somebody, your spouse, make the plan. But if I show up in your house or your workplace and there's not a clear design of what you're working towards or what you're after or what you're measuring, if it's not being designed out, it's being left to hope. Some better be have the design. If you don't have the design, get the design from the boss. If you don't know what to do, ask, where do I play in here? Like, wh wh where do I fit in here? What's the overall design of the mission, the company, the scale? I know a lot of you, you work for or participate with other people, you gotta know where you fit in. I think it's really important. But in our own individual lives, too much is left to reaction, too much is left to distraction. And so we're not designing the ideal living experience that we want. Was it set up the way you wanted? Was it, like, did it roll out in your intention? You know, to me, I, I look around, I'm like, wow, I designed this whole thing. It wasn't what I thought, but here we are, right? I designed that. I created that. I had the support of Denise and my team, but we're, we're making it happen. We're moving day by day. We're designing the new brands, the new future, the new pages, the new funnels, the new metrics, the new things. Like it's constantly, uh, we're, we're constantly like, we've got this like ball of clay and we're making it do what we want. Sometimes a piece falls ugly and whatever, but it's, it's moving towards something. And I think it's important that we all know whether or not we are designing our destiny or we're along for the bumpy ride of the world's whims. Whether we are designing our life path or we're just marching under the flag of randomness. And that's why I'm always telling you guys, so many people leave their personal development to randomness and it's why they're always in mediocrity. They're not designing the path forward. They're not designing their mindset. They're not designing their habits. Like me, th this is not... Brendan by nature, uh, Brendan by nature was a shy kid, couldn't write, didn't know how to coach people, uh, didn't know how to public speak, didn't know how to communicate, never talked with his arms, like completely different. I designed the person I became. I'm proud of that because the old person had a bad mindset. The, 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 the original 1.0 Brendan was, was awkward and he didn't like being awkward. Now I'm awkward, I'm like, that's authentic, baby. You know, I like myself, I've designed myself. I, I think that's important. You gotta sculpt yourself. And I think there's nothing better than the next 45 days to design your life, design your holidays, design your vacations, design your businesses, design your brands. I think that's just super powerful. What am I on? Did I already do 1D?
I did two, where'd my other, oh there, okay, decide, design, and the last thing is, this is, a, this is your homework, let's dream big. I'd love for you to go through the whole life assessment in your planner and think about what is the big dream for this next decade. I want you to immediately watch this video again, uh, unless it really bummed you out, and if it did, watch it three more times. And then once you've done that, now I want you to let that go, take a long walk, and think, what do I want for my next decade? We're gonna help you figure out your decade. Not January 1st, New Year's goals, your decade. We're gonna design your next decade. We're not gonna get it perfect, we're not gonna get it right, but we're gonna get you fired up. We're gonna get you started. We're gonna get you more strategic. Because wouldn't it be great? Think about it the hot mess of your last decade, the randomness. And now think of all the maturity, all the skill, all the confidence, all the support you got, all the coaching you got right now, that you can strategically enter a whole decade. Think about how different of experience it would be. Wouldn't it be great to finish the next decade and go, I strategically crushed that year. Not I bumbled through, not I survived, I strategically smashed it. I moved all the chess pieces to make the ideal life for me and my family and my team and my impact in the world. Thank you for being part of this community. Thank you for all of your experience, your sharing, everything you've done down here. Now I know this one's an easy answer because I was super short on the last one. Which were your three favorites or which was your favorite here? Was it decide, design, or dream? I didn't speak too much to the dream because that's your homework but I know you guys are gonna enjoy that too. Which one, which one resonated with you? Something you're really excited to pay attention to, gave you an aha, makes you think about, which was yours? I'm gonna write down mine right now. My very favorite one. Okay, mine was design. Design was my favorite one in that one because I can't wait to design the next decade of my life. Make it big dreams, but just I love the architecting, the chess pieces, the moving it around. I love it. I love designing my day, designing my morning habits, designing these curriculums for you to help you always be thinking about the next level in your life. You deserve an incredibly vibrant and connected and excellence-driven life. So I congratulate you and cheer you on as a community for being here with us. I celebrate you. I can't wait to finish this year strong with each and every one of you. And remember, as Nisa always says, you can either show up and just go through the motions and be ordinary, or you can choose to be extraordinary. So my friends, go be extraordinary. Hey, it's Brent. I just want to thank you for watching my channel. There's so many other teachings and trainings on this channel, so please enjoy. Thanks for being here. Also, for those who want to go to another level, I have an upcoming Certified High Performance Coach Certification Week. This is where I teach you and certify you to become a world-class life coach. We call them certified high-performance coaches. You can click the link in the description right now to apply and to learn about our upcoming certification week. If you want to go to another level as a life coach and you want me to certify you and help you, make sure you click that link and take advantage of it right now. Enrollment is open today.